to get into, and I really don't even know where to start. But I'm going to start with this. First of all, we really got to really start to be concerned about the state of the MEAC. We already saw what South Carolina State looked like against Jackson State. It was, it was bad. It got even worse this weekend. First of all, my Bowie State Bulldogs completely demolished Delaware State. But that's not even the worst part of it. The worst part of it is I saw Delaware State and after seeing them against us and after seeing their schedule, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I do not believe that Delaware State is going to win a single game this season. I'm, I got to be 100% honest. Delaware State is not going to win a game this year, in my opinion. They got Navy, that's a loss. Central, that's a loss. Morgan, that's a loss. Uh, Virginia University, Lynchburg, that's a loss. In my opinion, they are the worst Division I football team in the country. I don't see how another one could be worse than that. Like, just be 100% honest, if you were to put Delaware State in the CIAA this season, they would finish close to the bottom. They'd, be, they'd probably, be, of course, they'd be better than Lincoln. They'd be better than... Livingstone, but I think them and Shaw, neck and neck. I think St. Augs got them. So, you, you know, yeah, they're that bad. And it was really weird how this all, all played out. Because I, I, I drove up there, I get to Delaware State around 1220. The game starts at 1 o'clock. When I get there, that's both the teams are like on the field warming up before they go back into the locker room, right? So both teams are going back to the locker rooms. The locker rooms are close. And you hear Bowie State, you know, they're it's the first game of the season. It's week one. You hear Bowie State, you're all like, whoa, whoa, let's go, let's go. And they talking trash to um, Delaware State. Delaware State was completely silent. Nobody was amped up. Nobody was jumping around. Nobody was talking trash. Nobody was hyping anybody up. They looked like they had just woken up. No lie. They had zero energy. Zero. And then when they came out for, for kickoff, it was the same thing. That was the weakest running out of a tunnel I've ever seen in my life. No energy. Nobody's fired up. Nobody's energetic. I know they got a brand new head coach. And listen, it's early, but it doesn't look as if he's handling his new position all that well, honestly. And the reason I say that is because... They did not look ready to play at all from the start of the game. They didn't look ready to play at all. That, that's, that's an issue. Because, you know, even, even bad teams throughout summer camp and leading up to the season, you, you trick yourself, you convince yourself that y'all going to be good this year. So everybody goes to the first game hype and fired up. They were not. They did not look like they wanted to play. They did not look interested in playing football. The whole game I'm watching their sideline, you don't see like a whole bunch of position meetings. You don't see a whole bunch of assistant coaches firing up the squad. You don't see anything. It is completely dead on the sideline the entire game. It did not look like they were interested in playing football, just to be perfectly honest. And for what I see from them on the field, oh, man. There was not one position group that they had where I thought, like, man, they got something here. No. Receivers weren't good. Quarterback wasn't good. 
Secondary wasn't good. D-line wasn't good. O-line wasn't. Nothing about them was impressive at all. They weren't bigger or stronger like you would expect. A, although it's FCS, it's still Division I. So you still expect them to be bigger and a little bit faster than a Division II school. Not the case at all. So, yeah, I looked at the schedule. I don't see them winning a single game this year, which is unfortunate because they're still an HBCU and HBCU family. You don't want them to go out like that, but, I mean, who are they going to beat? Now, on to Bowie State. I told you guys I wasn't going to give my prediction on Bowie State until I saw them in the first game. I gave you the, the things I, have, I was going to look for going into this game. I said I was going to look to see if the special teams got better because last year it was really bad. I said, oh, we got a new quarterback. I got to see what he looks like. And I said, you know, we got to work on the running game. I got to see how that looks. Let me tell you. The, I got, let me take my hat off. Let me take my hat off to the coach. Coach Jackson. The special teams is night and day. We had one mishap, but other than that, our special teams was phenomenal today. It's like a whole new unit. The only issue we have with our special teams is we can't kick long-distance field goals, which, I mean, that's not really a problem because, you know, in Division II, HBCU football, that's to be expected, you know? It's not like any other schools are kicking 50 yarders either. So we have improved our special teams tenfold. The quarterback, I like him. He's accurate. He's tall. He's mobile. Athletic. The moment wasn't too big for him. He came ready to play. The only issue that we have is the running game. This is an issue that we had last year that has not yet worked itself out. We could not. That's the only thing Delaware State did well. We could not run the football at all. I don't know why. I don't know what the issue is. But it's the same issue we had last year. We, for whatever reason, and this is as a Bowie State, one thing we always been able to do, even when we weren't winning games back in the day when I was a student, we was always, be, always able to run that rock. But right now, the running game is a problem. The reason I say the running game is a problem is because that it prolonged the game, it affected the passing game, and it affected the defense. Because what happened was we were so unable to run the ball, even though we were up the entire game and dominating the entire game, we couldn't run the clock because we couldn't run the ball. And because we couldn't run the ball, we became one-dimensional. So we had to pass almost, we had to pass way too much. And they were sitting back in coverage and the quarterback had to hold on the ball too long because they were not worried about the run game. We could not run at all. Once again, I don't know if that was their game plan. I don't know what it was. But the reason why I'm ringing the alarm bell is because this is the exact problem we had last year. That's all I'm saying. We, we, we got to figure out this run game. If we're going to really... Go up to Michigan and handle business next week. We're going, to be able, we're going to have to run that ball. If we really want the passing game to be as dynamic as it can be, because we got some playmakers, we got some solid quarterback play, we got all of that. If we really want things to be as dynamic as they can and should be, we have to run the ball better going forward. Have to. So that brings me to my prediction. Listen, from what I've seen, 
Brandon against it. I mean, Delaware State did, is still a Division One program, you know, whatever. But from what I've seen, as far as the size of the O-line, the D-line, the speed, the ability to rush the passer, the ability to pass block, the quarterback play, the special teams, I'm just going to obviously, I'm biased, but I'm going to say Bowie State will be in Salem for the CIAA championship. Bowie State is winning the North. We're 1-0 right now. We're going to see what happens next week in Michigan. Then we got Shaw at home, first home game of the season. And I'm looking at it right now. Shaw is getting curb stomped by Benedict. And even though I don't like Shaw, I was rooting for him against Benedict because, hey, it's good for the CIAA, but that's not going to happen. On top of that, Shaw's quarterback just got knocked out of this game. I don't know how long he's going to be out, but we're 1-0. We'll see what happens next week. We, uh, yeah, Benedict just scored again, 28-0. It's not even halftime. Shaw is done. I'm going to go ahead and turn this game off. It, 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 it's a wrap. 28 nothing. This is a beatdown. They, they're done. Which, hey, <laughs> I can't be too sad because, you know, hey, I remember what Shaw did to us last year, so I ain't too sad they're getting curb stomped right now. Let, let's be clear about that. But, yes, we're 1-0. We're going to beat Shaw. We're going to beat St. Augs. We got Virginia State at home coming, which reminds me, the state of the MEAC. Listen, man, I don't know what they I don't know what they're gonna do, but they gotta figure something out. The conference is is bad right now. Delaware State is terrible. Norfolk State is not that much better. Virginia State just trounced those boys today. The only saving grace they have in the MEAC, they got Central. And they curb stop Winston Salem, beat them down. They were up like twenty eight at half, just like Benedict is on Shaw. So they got that, and I'm trying to tell you guys. I'm telling you right now, watch out for Morgan State. Everybody's talking about Howard because they got that mythical co championship last year. I'm telling you, man, don't worry about. Don't worry about Howard. They, they, they not them. I'm telling you, the team that's them. Morgan State will finish second in the MEAC this year. I'm telling you. Obviously, I'm biased because Coach Wilson was, is Bowie's old coach. But I'm tell, listen, I'm telling you, Morgan State, they're playing right now. They're playing, uh, I think, uh, Richmond's in the CAA. They're playing Richmond right now, playing them tough. I'm telling you. But, yeah, the MEAC, they got to figure some things out. Yep, Morgan State in Richmond, 7-7 seven, seven at halftime. I'm telling you, Morgan is a squad, man. Watch out for – nobody's talking about Morgan, which is perfect. They're right under the radar. They're going to be real good this year. But the MEAC is going to have to figure some things out. They, first of all, they got to figure out – the programs that they already have. These programs have to get better talent. They have to. And they have to get better coaching. There's no reason why Delaware State and Norfolk State should be this bad. I'm not saying they got to be the darlings of the FCS, but they shouldn't be this. this like, this is, come on, man. These programs should not be this bad. So they really got to figure some things out. They got to figure out they can, how to get a couple of more members. They got to figure out how to improve the members that they have. Morgan State's going to be on their way up soon. That's good. NCCU is a, is a power. That's good. Nationally ranked. That's good. But outside of that, I don't. they got to figure some things out. Fast, but let me let me do, let me give some positives. I will say this: Delaware State is a beautiful campus. That was actually my first time there at Delaware State. That is a beautiful school, huge, beautiful school. 
And they packed out the house. I got to give them that. They fans loaded up that arena. It, it was packed. I give them that. But hold on. While we speaking on that, Bowie State showed up. I'm not even going to exaggerate. Bowie State showed up. We had a few hundred people there in Delaware. It was a beautiful thing to see so many black and gold out there in Delaware. It was a beautiful sight to see. But yeah, the MEAC, we got to, we got to, because I don't want them to be down like this. Because they're still HBCUs. It's still a historic HBCU conference. I need them to, 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 to rise again and figure some things out. Because at this point, you really got to start to have the conversation. What FCS conference is the MEAC better than? Top to bottom. And it's like, I don't even want to answer that because it's depressing. But yes, like I said, back to Bowie State. I got to say, I think we'll be back in Salem. I'm just going out on faith that the running game is not going to look how it did today. Because if it does, then we're going to be in trouble. But I, I'm, I'm stepping out on faith. We're going to figure out this running game. And listen, we figured that out. I don't see us losing to, to anybody in the conference. I'm not going to lie to you. The one game that does scare me a little bit is homecoming versus Virginia State. Only because I know Virginia State remembers what we did to them last year for their homecoming. And I know they want some get back from that. Because we completely ruined their homecoming. And it was on TV. So I know they remember that. And apparently after what they did to Norfolk, they're a solid squad, too. So we got, you know, I am a little worried about that game. but we sh And, you know, homecoming is like a very populated game. But I'm not going to lie, man. Homecoming crowds are not my favorite. Because homecoming crowds, they pack out this stadium, but they don't really cheer. They're there to be seen. And so the game will be going on, and it won't, it'll be kind of quiet. That's the only thing about homecoming games. It's a packed house, but it's kind of quiet because people are not really there to try to cheer on the team like that. So it's not as much of a home field advantage as you would think it is. Hopefully we change that. But, yeah, I'm nervous about Virginia State, but I think, we, I think we're going to take them. We need, we're going to have to if we're going back to Salem. So that's my prediction. I'm predicting that when it's all said and done, we're going to be no more than one loss on our way back to Salem. Let's go Bulldogs. Holiday weekend.